Howdy everybody from the surface of the sun. It is hot today. Well, I've had several uh, messages to show the leaves up close again. So like I said yesterday, you can never have too many wild lettuce videos. So we're going to have some more up close videos today. And this one is going to be on leaf shape. And what I know to be actual varieties okay this one right here with the elongated long tip but then the C shape marks out of it right here the key is that long pointy tip that's the canadensis it doesn't have any hairs on the mid ridge and it is smooth there are no hairs or prickles anywhere on the plant at all here's the this is standard this is the seed head before it opens here is a larger example of the canadensis. Now remember we had talked about that this plant can have up to three different kinds of leaves on a single plant, like different shaped leaves. It can have uh, a rounded leaf and then as it goes up change into this kind of leaf. So there we've got our canadensis, arrow-shaped tip. Now, this is one of the varosas. This tip, as you see, is different. It's not pointed. It's more rounded with a slight point. And you can see then these cutouts in it. Okay, when you turn it over. Now when you get very large plants of one of the varosas, remember there are seven different kind. But the ones that I have, sometimes when the leaves get very large, there are slight hairs on the back but this mid ridge is smooth okay this is the prickly lettuce the cereola these edges these edges actually prickle and when you turn it over it has very, let's see if I can get a side shot here. Yeah, it has very defined prickles on the back. So, sorry about my trimmers, y'all. Okay, now on several of my cereolas, the plant starts at the base with this kind of leaf and goes all the way to the top with no changes. On a different one of my prickly lettuces, it starts out with a rounded leaf with these little prickle edges and a prickle back. And then as it goes up further, it changes to this shape. Now that may be the difference between first year and second year plants, but in some regions, the wild lettuce is a self-sowing annual. In some places, it's a perennial. And then in some places, it's a biennial. And then that further breaks down per the species or variety. So, there's you a refresher on the leaves that I have available to me. Now, at this point, I've been sent many different pictures and videos. I have now seen one of the wild lettuces 
that has a shape like this. It has a dark green leathery leaf top and there is a very marked burgundy undertone to it. Okay. This one I have seen is one of the purple lettuces and there are several of the purple Lactuca wild lettuces in America and it has a slight curvature it is a thick leathery plant and it is a dark green with purple tint to where you can actually see defined purple on it now this is one of the fine leaf varieties of wild lettuce now I don't know the correct names of these I'm still researching and then there is this one where it's it's very very curvy along the edge but it frills up it frills up now these wild lettuces are where I suspect the garden lettuce that we have in the grocery store because the sativa which is that lettuce can crossbreed with these other lettuces easily the cereola can cross with these other varieties but the varosa will not cross it will only mutate within itself and create these other varosa subspecies and that may be environmental where it is that may be that there's a mutation in the gene and it creates another plant but the varosas all have a signature for being a varosa and there's seven of them the canadensis will cross with some species of wild lettuce now I have put dozens of links at this point in my community post and if you want to learn more about it each of those scientific research biology chemical analysis nutrient analysis scientific links if you want to click on those and then just start clicking that the links take you from place to place to place and it helps you also with the terminology so that then you can cross reference easier now I had one gentleman remark that he was sure I didn't know what the compound names were or understand about chemical compounds I'm just going to let him keep thinking that, and that's fine. I don't have to prove myself to anybody. But my point in all of this is not to talk down to you guys in chemical terminology, where there is an important terminology that I think is beneficial to you, like the sesquiterpenes. I'm going to share that with you. But it's not important to know all of those details in order to understand the principles behind the plant and how you can use the plant. Remember, lacticarium, lactocoprican, lactucin, and hyacycamine. There are the four very important chemicals that we know exist plentifully in this plant. Three of them are pain relief, one of them is antispasmodic, but then there's dozens more. So, until my next video, I hope this serves you well, and uh, it is leaf identification. So, I will be doing another video shortly, but I'm going to upload this now, and I hope you are all staying cool, because right at this point, it's become dangerous hot. So until my next video, 
God bless you all and goodbye.